Have you ever wondered how your laptop, tablet, smartphone gets an IP address on your local area network? Well, it's done using a system called DHCP. And in this video, I want to dive in, a deep dive, in fact, into DHCP. I'm not just gonna wave my hand around and say, well, it's the way you get, I'm actually gonna look at the packets that flow from one thing from the client to the server and back again. I've written a tool which can decode those packets so you can actually have a look at all of the individual bits and bytes to see what those packets are. That tool is up on my GitHub repository. And so we're really gonna go deep and look at the DHCP protocol. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's get into this then. Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, DHCP. So what is DHCP used for? Well, DHCP assigns an IP address to a client for a limited period of time or until that client explicitly relinquishes the address. What do I mean by client? I mean your laptop, your desktop, a tablet, your smartphone, even a smart TV, uh, anything that needs an address to work on your uh local area network and it doesn't have an address when it first boots up and it needs to get one. So what is an IP address since we've talked about that one? An IP address is like your home address, like your postal address, but for a device on the network. So just like your postal address, uh, people can send you, you know, uh, mail, paper mail, okay, because they've got your address, 32 Maple Avenue, you know, whatever. Uh, now, an actual IP address is the digital equivalent of address for a device on your network so that the information for that device goes to the right place. Now, IP4 addresses look something like this, 192.168.1.18. So there are four, basically, bytes uh, which you list with this dot notation. We ran out of IP4 addresses, although we're still uh, managing to get along using some clever technology to uh, root uh, in special ways. But basically, there was IPv6, which came out, which uses a much, much longer address format, so we shouldn't ever run out of them. But IPv4 is still the predominant version, even though IPv6 came out in 1995. So it wasn't the success it was meant to be. Um, and uh, I'll be concentrating on IPv4 in this particular video. Okay, so here is your typical LAN. You've got some computers there all connected together. We're gonna to say using an ethernet cable, though they could be connected together using Wi-Fi. Now, each computer needs an address so that it can access other TCP IP services. So TCP IP is the protocol that is the backbone of the uh, internet. HTTP uh, is based on TCP IP. Uh, and so many other protocols we use, uh, and you need to have an IP, that's what the IP bit uh, here in TCP IP, you need to have an address so that you can then talk over uh, TCP IP for all the other stuff that you need. But how does each computer know its address? Well, one way, of course, you can manually configure it. You can say, go to this computer, say, right, you are 192.168.0.7, you are .8, you're .21, you're .100, and I do that with some of my devices here on my network because I want servers that I have, for example, my NAS server, I want it to have a permanent IP address and I've chosen to do that manually inside the web interface of my network attached storage. However, you can also uh, get them allocated dynamically and a more advanced topic is you can actually configure this so that certain, certain devices always get the same address. So you kind of dynamically yet permanently setting a static I address because it always gets the same address. But that's beyond this video. But if you don't, if it doesn't have address, it wants to get one. Now, there will typically be on your network some kind of uh, modem or router that connects you to the internet. You've got that through your internet service provider. And the good news is it also acts as a DHCP server. So as long as you've got your router there and you're connected to the internet, it will automatically serve uh, DHCP services to the rest of your network, which means basically you buy a laptop from the store, you plug it in and it just works. That's the great thing about it. And so it works like this. Uh, a client that you just switched on, a desktop you just switched on says, can I have an IP address, please? And the DHCP server on the modem router says, sure thing, you can use 192.1.1.18. Of course, it keeps a little track of all the addresses it's given out. It keeps a track of the addresses that it's, it's heard from recently because they're also being routing around there on the internet. Uh, it kind of knows the state of the network, and so it knows what address it can give out. And as I said, you can configure those to do some more clever things, change the range, give away some 
permanent ones and so on. But that's basically the idea. So in technical talk, and that's what we're going to be looking at more for the rest of this video, the client sends what's called a DHCP discover message. And we're going to dive into how these all look in a minute. The DHCP server replies with an offer. And then the client says, OK, I like your offer. I'd like to make a request, please. And then it replies back with an acknowledgement saying, yes, you've been given that address. So in kind of simple English, can anyone give me an IP address? Uh, I can, says the DHCP server. What about 192.168.1.18? The client says, I want 192.168.1.18. And it goes, you have it, 192.168.1.18. So can anyone give me an address? Yes, I want that. OK, it's yours. Now, you can technically have more DHCP servers on the network. That can be tricky to configure because you don't want them giving out clashing of addresses. But you can get multiple offers. That was the point I'm trying to make. You can get multiple offers coming back and then the client needs to pick one and actually request it. Now, all this is going on when the client doesn't yet have an IP address. And I just said you need an IP address to be able to use TCP IP services. So how is this possible? Well, since the client doesn't yet have an IP address, what it uses is a broadcast address, a special address, normally 255.255.255.255, that sends the message to everyone on the, on the network. So it just gets broadcast to everyone on the network, mainly on your LAN. Of course, it's not going out onto the internet. Your router won't pass that out onto the internet. It will stay inside of your house, inside of your uh, office, inside of your uh, workspace. Uh, and every device receives it. And of course, other PCs and laptops just say, well, I don't know what that is. I'm not interested in that. It just ignores it. But it finally also gets to your router and it goes, oh, I know what to do with that because I'm also a DHCP server. Now, here is what the uh, DHCP packet looks like. So it's a network packet. So you need to build these by hand, uh, just filling in the right fields. And here on the left, we kind of show you what it looks like. These show these are one byte each. These show these are four bytes. So there's a transaction ID, for example, and that's four bytes long. All the addresses here are four bytes long because we're dealing with 192.168.1.1. 18, which is four bytes. So you can fill in all the addresses here in those four bytes. And there's a thing here called the options. And actually a lot of the DHCP stuff goes on here in the option section. And these are basically just a variable and a value. And then you have to include the length in there. And the reason for that is that this originally was part of a different protocol called boot P. And boot P was kind of been superseded by uh, DHCP and some of the extra stuff has been put here in the options. So it means that the packet remains uh, in the same format and compatible with boot P, even though it's not used nowadays, really. And the great thing about writing this stuff in, say, a language like C is that you can literally just map this across to a structure. So look here, op one byte. And we're saying here unsigned integer eight bits uh, H type one byte. And then when you get down to a transfer ID, well, that's four bytes. So it's a 32 bit number and so on. And you can just map these two across, which means to create a packet, all you've got to do in C is just fill in these numbers. You just say dot X ID is equal to and then fill it in with something and your packet created and then you just broadcast it over the internet. Now, of course, the source code for this uh, program that, we're, that I've written here will be available on GitHub for you to uh, look at it and study it. But this is really the fundamental thing of it. You fill in this structure and then you respond according to whether it's a DHCP request or a DHCP acknowledgement, you know, whatever you've uh, looking at across your your little program here. And of course, when you fill this in an actual C program, you've got comments here to kind of remind you what it is. So it's really easy just to fill in these uh, different fields and then use it. OK, so next I'm going to go over to the command line and I'm going to actually use the program that I've written which literally just fills in these fields at different points and sends and receives them. Uh, I'm going to show you DHCP working from this kind of test client that I've written. OK, so here I am over on a Raspberry Pi and I've got this program called DHCP Test Tool, DTT. OK, and here's the source code for it. And as you can see, these are the different parts uh, and if you just go back there, look, uh, checking the message coming in, is it a discover, is it an offer and all this kind of stuff. So the source code's available on GitHub, but really the key is that you just want to fill in this field here. Now, the tool is very verbose, so we can look at what it's doing. So first of all, we're going to run uh, 
uh, DTT and we're going to do minus VV, which means very verbose. And it's going to be give out to a lot of raw output. So that's all just happened. So let's just scroll up here a bit. So the first thing it's going to do is send a DHCP discover message. And so look, opt, op, that's that first byte there. H type, that's that first byte there. Hlin, six in there. Hops, zero. The transfer ID, there you go, a 32-bit number. And basically, when you send off your first DHCP discover, you don't fill in anything other than the transfer ID and your MAC address. And the rest of it, uh, except for the bit here about it being a DHCP request, is pretty simple. Now, we're going to run the program again with just one V, and it gives us a mind of a better decoding of this. So what's it saying? It's a boot request, that's for boot P. Here's my transfer ID, it needs a magic cookie. It's hard code, that's the same for every message to make sure it's a validly formatted packet. Okay, all the addresses here are zero, except for we say, I would like, this is a DHCP discover. I would like the subnet mask, the root of the DNS server, the least time and the server ID. And then finally you can put in your client ID. So that's what all those numbers up here mean OK, when you actually decode them. OK, and they're just filling in all these things here, plus the options. And then what we can see happen is you get a reply. So a boot reply and it says, yes, I am a DHCP offer. Uh, the, uh, the address is coming from 192.1.1. That's my modem router. You can have the address for 7200 seconds. You should renew after this amount of time. Here's the subnet mask. OK, and the important thing is offering me 192.168.1.141. That's the address it's offering me. And I can then say, yes, I want that address. I don't at this point. I can say I want that address. And if you look at that as just the, the raw numbers, that's all this stuff is encoded in here. OK, so you basically have a length, a type, a length, and then the data. And that's all described in the DHCP documentation. It's fairly uh, simple to get hold of. But again, you're just filling in this structure plus the options and then you send it and then you get the reply back. And if I run it without anything, I get this very simple. Sending a DHCP discover with this uh, transfer ID, transmission ID, and I get back a DHCP offer with the same ID and it's offering me .141. At this point, we stop. Now we can run my little program with minus R. I mean, I also want to include the request and it will do exactly the same thing. So we can see here's the DHCP discover. I've got a DHCP offer come back. OK, and then it says now I'm sending the DHCP request again with that same transmission ID. It waits for the acknowledge. The acknowledge receives back saying I do have now address 141. And then what I actually do is I send a DHCP release. That's one that say I don't want this address anymore because I don't want to clog up my network with, uh, you know, constantly requesting for things and then not being freed. And the, the reason why I've included all this debug input and output on this is that it means now that you can go and look at the code and you can see how those packets are formatted and it's really easy to understand. So, OK, so there you go. DHCP. OK, so there you have it, the DHCP protocol. As I said, that tool is in my GitHub repository. Do have a look at it. Do have some fun with it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. And please do check out my Patreon page. OK, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. <music>